how Kerberos works. Hi, I'm Don Jones, and as you probably know, Kerberos is the native authentication protocol in Active Directory, so it's used by Windows networks everywhere, but it's surprising how few people really know how the protocol works. And if you're going to understand some of Active Directory's more advanced concepts like delegation and so forth, it's important to understand what's going on under the hood in Kerberos. So let's dive in. So in any authentication situation, you really have a three different parties that are involved. The first is the client. Now, sometimes that's a client computer, but more frequently it's an actual user who's sitting at that computer and trying to access resources. Then there's the resource that they're trying to access. In this example, it'll be some files on a file server. And there's the KDC, the key distribution center. Now in an Active Directory network, that's an Active Directory domain controller. And this is the guy that really kind of brings everybody together. Interestingly, in Kerberos, there's no communication between the resource and the KDC. There doesn't need to be. The client actually takes on the majority of the processing burden in Kerberos, which kind of distributes that authentication workload across the network. But it does so in a way that's secure and trustworthy, as we're going to see. So things kick off when the client attempts to actually log on to the network. Here's how that works. The client constructs an authenticator. Now that's a, a special little package that says, here's who I claim to be and, and some other information, including the date and the time. Now those authenticators are only good for a certain period of time. That way they can't be captured and then replayed back on the network by an attacker. So this will represent that authenticator. Now a portion of that is unencrypted, the user and his name and so forth. That way when this gets sent off, the KDC or domain controller can see who's trying to authenticate. But a portion of it is encrypted using the user's password. So that's what this pink key will represent and that's what this pink lock will represent, that the user's password, which is known to the user, has been used as an encryption key. This is an important concept because it emphasizes the fact that Kerberos doesn't transmit your password across the network. It uses it as a shared secret. Now, shared secret simply means that when this thing is sent off to the domain controller, the domain controller can open it up and it can see in clear text, okay, this is who that user claims to be. I'm gonna go in my database and look up what I think their password is and see if I can use it to decrypt the authenticator. If I can't, well, then this was clearly encrypted with a password other than the one I know about, so this user isn't who they say they are. If I can decrypt it, though, then this user must be who they say they are because they've got the correct password. So from this point, I don't need that authenticator anymore. It can actually just completely go away. Instead, I'm going to create a ticket-granting ticket, or a TGT. Now, I, as the domain controller, have my own encryption key that I'm going to use to encrypt a portion of this TGT. I've already gone through the laborious process of looking up this user and making sure they are who they say they are. So I'm going to save all that information in here, but I'm going to encrypt it using a key that only I know. Then I'm going to transmit this whole thing back to the client, and they're going to store it in a special area of memory called the Kerberos tray. Now that's an area of memory that cannot be swapped out to disk. It always lives in memory. That way if the computer crashes, this information hasn't been saved anywhere persistent. Okay, so now the client is logged on, they're ready to go, and they're ready to get to something on a file server. So my computer looks at my Kerberos tree and says, well, you don't have a ticket for the file server. So we're gonna go back to the key distribution center and what we're gonna do is send it this ticket granting ticket along with a request. Hey, I need a ticket for the file server. The key distribution center, the domain controller, does not have to look up my information again. It simply uses its key to decrypt the TGT that it gave me earlier. If it decrypts successfully, then it knows that this is the information it generated itself previously. Now these ticket granting tickets are usually good for eight hours by default. So periodically they will have to be destroyed and renewed that way the domain controller gets an opportunity to revalidate my identity, but it doesn't have to do that every time, which saves it some effort. So the client actually does keep a copy of this in its Kerberos tray. It sent a copy off to the domain controller. The domain controller knows who I am now and can thus generate a 
ticket. Now, here's the cool thing. Because this file server is also a domain member, the domain controller has its logon password, which it uses to encrypt this ticket. And there's no communication to the file server itself. Instead, this ticket is created by the domain controller and given to the client who stores it in the Kerberos tray. Now, for the next eight hours, while that ticket is still good, any time the client needs to access something on that file server, all it has to do is create a copy of that ticket and send it to the file server. The file server says, uh, I have no idea who you are. I've never seen you before. So I'm going to use my password, which I know, to try and decrypt this ticket. If I'm able to do so, then this ticket must have been generated by the KDC because that's the only other person that knows my password. That tells me, the file server, that this is a legitimate ticket. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that. I'll open it up, that'll tell me your username and what groups you're a member of, and I'll use that information to decide what you're allowed to access. And every time you come back to me, Mr. Client, you're gonna need to resend me a copy of this certificate. That way I, the file server, don't have to store all this garbage in memory. Because the file server is working with hundreds, potentially thousands of users, if it had to keep all those tickets, it would be a huge pain in the neck. So there's actually a, a command line utility you can get, or a, a Windows utility called CurbTray. Uh, it's in the resource kit, it's available for download on the internet, and it lets you view this Kerberos tray so you can see all of the tickets that a client has gathered. So this is how authentication works. The client goes to the KDC to get the, the ticket, and then it stores them and presents them to a file server. And that's how the whole Kerberos protocol really works. I hope this has been informative for you. And I'd like to thank you for viewing.